Warning, this video contains spoilers for the entire first season of Squid Game. If you still haven't watched it yet, come back once you have. Or don't, I'm not your dad, but you've been warned. Sup nerds! So, Squid Game, the Korean smash hit that's taken over the world. It's a great show. However, as much as I enjoyed watching this thriller, there was just something about it that was really bugging me. The fact that only two players just happened to be alive for the final round just seemed too coincidental. Now, that on its own isn't bad or anything, but consider the previous round, Stepping Stones. There were 16 players going into this game, however only three survived. My gut told me this was way too low, so I did what any normal person would do. Write a bunch of code in Python to simulate 100,000 games. The results are in, and let's just say the games are rigged, and I have proof. As a refresher, let's go over the rules of Stepping Stones. In this game, there are 18 pairs of glass panels that the players need to cross. The catch is that one of them is tempered glass that can support the weight of two people. The other? Well, it instantly shatters on contact and you fall to your death. Which side each one is on is completely random, giving a 50% chance of survival for each jump the player in front makes. And see, that right there is the problem. Unlike all the other previously played games, this one's based entirely on luck. Going first means certain death, but going last gives you the advantage of knowing which pains are safe. Sure, there's some potential strategy in stalling the timer, however, we're going to ignore this in our calculations just for simplicity. The question we'll be asking today is whether 13 of the 16 people being eliminated in game 5 actually lines up with what we would see. But Carbon, you may ask, why do you have an issue with the stepping stone specifically? Isn't it chance whether there are 16 players to begin with? And to that I say, you're right, however, this doesn't matter one bit. Remember, the front man can just increase or decrease the panels as he sees fit, so he chose 18 panels for 16 players. Was this too many? Was this too few? Well, let's find out. So for the sanity of all you nerds out there, I'm going to keep the maths to a minimum and just go over the basics. However, if you would like a more in-depth analysis, I'm happy to make a follow-up video for the weirdos like me who enjoy probability and statistics. Not many of you. For our model, we'll assume that once a player jumps on a glass pane, the other player will know which one is solid. Furthermore, it's assumed that no one can tell the glass panes apart and the timer will be ignored. With this in mind, let's set up the problem. First consider just one pair of glass panes. When you jump on one of them, what are the possible outcomes? Well, one of two things can occur. Either you survive or you die. Such a scenario is called a Bernoulli trial, with a probability of 0.5, as you have a 50% chance of survival for this event. We then do it again, 17 more times, and we count how many happy little accidents occur. Now, while it's possible to just calculate the probability of three people surviving from here, that requires equations and maths. Ugh. Instead, we can just repeat the process over and over and over, and every single time we count how many people survived, and then we can just tally it all up. So to do this, I wrote a script in Python that simulated the Stepping Stones game 100,000 times, and here are the results. On the bottom here, you can see the numbers 0 to 16. This is a count of how many players survived. The left side indicates what the respective probabilities are. So for example, the chance of exactly six players surviving is 16.7%. As you can see, the most likely scenario is that seven players survive, as this has the highest probability of occurring. However, in Squid Game, we only see three people make it across the glass panes. And what are the chances of that happening? 3.2%. Now, I will admit that while these odds are low, it isn't impossible by any means. If this was the full story, I'd just be like, oh well, front man just happened to get lucky, you know? And I just wouldn't bother making a video. However, there's more to it than meets the eye. It's one thing to talk about hypotheticals, but let's turn our attention to what happens in the show. After 14 of the stepping stones across, we see the glassmaker is able to distinguish which panel is safe. This actually renders all our previous work useless, as beyond this point it is no longer a random process. It might seem like all hope is lost, but it isn't. We can just do the exact same calculations, but only up until this part. So in this scenario, we see that only four of the 16 players are still alive after crossing 14 stepping stones. What are the odds of this happening? Well, I just ran the same code with the new numbers and... This is way less likely. In fact, there's only a 0.5% chance of this ever actually happening. 
You might think that's way too low, but it isn't when you give it some thought. What does four players left alive imply about the dead contestants? Well, it means that 12 died across 14 different panels. Since each jump is a 50% chance of survival, this is like flipping a coin 14 times and getting 12 heads. It's extremely unlikely, it's never gonna happen. Also, side note to the people who are already typing in the comment section, but two people actually died on one of the glass panes, so this is wrong. Firstly, it doesn't make much of a difference, it's still like a 2% chance. <laughs> Secondly, this couldn't have possibly been accounted for when designing the game in the first place, meaning the conclusion I'm gonna make is still the same. So, why is this result so problematic? Let's take a look at the overarching narrative of the show. It is implied that only one person can win the games every year. This claim is supported by the documents John Ho finds, as well as the fact that the VIPs only bet on one overall winner. This means that in order for the right outcome to happen, there must be two players going into the final round. Why not more? Because Squid Game is played in teams. If there were, say, like four players going into the final round, then there'd be two people who emerge with the prize money instead of one. And obviously this can't happen. This is exactly why knives were given to the final three, to make sure that one dies and two are left for game six. With this in mind, let's revisit Stepping Stones from the perspective of the front man. His goal is to ensure that there will be two players for the Squid Game. This means he cannot afford everyone to die on the stepping stones, but he must cull as many as he possibly can. Knowing this, he should probably do some probability calculations like I have, see how many platforms would be appropriate. Upon seeing this data, however, something interesting to note is how wide this distribution is. It's extremely likely that anywhere between 4 and 10 players actually survive. Unfortunately, regardless of how many stepping stones there are, this distribution will always have this really wide region to it. What this means is that the front man cannot guarantee that he will have the exact right number of people he needs for the final game. It's too heavily based upon luck, and that will not sit well with the VIPs. So why leave things up to chance? Why not just rig the game in his favour? My theory is that all the glass panels are tempered, and the front man can control which ones shatter. Now, it may seem ridiculous, but honestly stop and look what happens in the show. Notice how every single time someone fell into the glass, it just happened to shatter? I mean, I can't be the only one who thought this, right? It's too much of a coincidence. Well, physics tells us it's not. Look at the jumps each player makes. When they land on the panel, their momentum is small as the jumps are very well controlled. Now look at this dude just falling face first into the glass. Try and tell me that his momentum is less than what you saw before. The reality is, this sort of thing is bound to shatter the glass no matter what. If the game was what they said it was, a shattered tempered glass panel means everyone dies. However, if all the panels were tempered, then this could just be avoided. Additionally, notice how there's a bit of a pause before the panels break? Now that on its own isn't bad, but the weird part is there aren't any cracks. When the players land, it's nothing. And all of a sudden, BAM! Shatter! The only way this could be explained is if the front man was detonating the panels remotely. And this is far from a stretch because we see him turn off the lights upon discovering what the glassmaker is doing, and all the panels explode at the end, so it's obvious the guy has control of this entire facility, gameplay included. I am the front man who operates and oversees all matters here. Speaking of the glassmaker, this is the one hole in my theory. He is shown to clearly be able to distinguish the two types of panels, right? Well, I can explain this one too. It's true that tempered glass will have faint stain marks and other imperfections, but does this even matter? I mean, if both of the panels are tempered, then this guy is still going to pick the one he thinks is right regardless. In such a stressful situation, the fact that he could jump on either would not cross his mind at all. Additionally, he still can tell the two apart after throwing a marble on one of them, meaning that both of them are probably the same. So to recap, we only have a 0.5% chance of what happens on screen realistically occurring, a clear motivation, glass platforms which always shatter when falling through them, and a delay before each panel breaks. The truth is, the game was rigged from the very start. Moral of the story? Don't rely on probabilities when you're creating a death game with only one winner. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, the least you can do is subscribe. Like, 
come on, you just watch a guy overanalyze a show that clearly didn't give a shit about real world statistics. Also, chuck us a like and a comment if there's anything else you'd like to see. Uh, lockdown is ending where I live, so it will actually give me the chance to finally make a few videos I've been wanting to for a while, so that's neat. I'll also leave a link to the Python script I wrote in the description if any of you want to critique my work. I'm no computer scientist, so please be gentle on me, thank you. Now I'm gonna go touch grass, it's been a while. Later nerds.